Welcome back to BYU Sports Station. We are live in Studio B on a Friday. Joining the show now is Kelly Ford, return visitor to the program. He is the creator of the K Ford Ratings, which is an extensive college football metric. Kelly, great to have you back on BYU Sports Nation as we look and discuss your number one overachiever in the game right now, which is BYU football. How do you make sense of this right now that BYU is so far ahead of the curve, Kelly? Yeah, well, Spencer, thanks for having me back. I appreciate it. And yes, BYU has been one of, if not the stories of the season here. My preseason realistic expectations projected two and three as the most likely record for BYU through five games. Obviously, the Cougs are five and oh. That nearly plus three more wins than projected is the number one differential in the nation that does make them my biggest overachievers to date. And really, I think the biggest reason why, kind of what surprised me the most, is the defense. I projected this unit to be number 82 in the preseason, and I actually think that was reasonable because this unit had ranked number 73 last year. They were number 102 in 2022, and they were number 83 in 2021. But through week five, this unit is currently ranked number 26 nationally on that side of the ball. It's a massive improvement over expected, only allowing more than 15 points one time. Mm. This offense ranks number 46. It's pretty close to where I had them, number 57 in the preseason. But it's the defense. It has been much, much better than we thought. Guys, if you ignore the COVID year of 2020, this could be the best defense in Provo of the CFP era. Yeah, no, no, no doubt about it. We've been saying it for, for quite some time now, right? Especially in the secondary. The secondaries, BYU's never had a secondary as deep as they do now. Okay, Kelly, in your opinion, does BYU have a chance, any chance at all, at being an at-large bid for the college football playoff? Or do you think they have to come away with a Big 12 championship win? I think BYU does have a chance to be an at-large team in a CFP. Given BYU's schedule difficulty, I think the Cougs need to get to at least 10 regular season wins to be in that at-large conversation. And right now, my numbers assign a 42% chance to win at least 10 games. Wow. So if, B if BYU gets to 10 like wins, Kelly. there's a good... There's a good chance you might be in Arlington. I swear, I'm not just saying this because you guys are BYU. This is what the numbers say. Um, but even if the tiebreakers were to go against BYU, I do think 10 wins should be uh, the aim for any CFP talk. And again, 42% chance to reach that number. And that doesn't even account for what are the chances that you get into Arlington and get that AQ. So out of curiosity, Kelly, what do your numbers and metrics say are the re toughest remaining games for BYU on the schedule? I'm sure Utah's probably in the mix there on the road in Salt Lake City. But how do the top you know, two or three most difficult games shake out for BYU in the remaining schedule. There are only two games remaining that my numbers currently make BYU an underdog. That is at UCF in week nine and at Utah in week 11. Both are projected to be one possession games, though. So, I mean, these are toss up games. There is an off week, as you guys know, between those two games. But that is a tough stretch right there of two games. you got a 44 percent chance at UCF, 36 percent chance win expectancy at Utah. Uh, it's important to keep in mind, though, and, and I caution this with every single fan base. Even though BYU is the favorite in all of their other games remaining, and, and Houston's the only one that's not currently projecting as a one-possession game. So mm. even though BYU is a favorite, a lot of these games are projected to be close. So it could go either way. The Big 12 race should be very, very exciting, and BYU has put themselves right at the forefront of that. Kelly, other than BYU, what Big 12 football team or what has been the biggest surprise uh, coming, out of, uh, yeah, com coming out of week six? Yeah, the biggest surprise, I'll go in the Big 12, I'll keep it that way, and it's a, it's a negative surprise, unfortunately, for this fan base. Um, Florida State, I know we're not Big 12, Florida State's been my biggest underachiever, but if you look beyond the Seminoles, I think that's an obvious one. Uh, number two on that list is Kansas. Yeah. And the Jayhawks have been downgraded nearly five points since the preseason of my model. That's actually not even in the top 20 of biggest downgrades. Uh, Florida State's number one in that metric as well. So just a bad, bad year in Tallahassee. But Kansas has 2.5 fewer wins than projected through week five. So BYU's overachieved by 2.5 plus wins. Uh, Kansas has underachieved by that. It's worth noting, Kansas is one and four this season. They are 0 and three in one possession games. BYU is 2-0 and oh in those games. It just goes to show how massive your record in one possession games is and how big of an impact, because you only play 12 games, how big of an impact it can have on defining success or failure of a team season. How do you do in those close games? Kelly Ford is the creator of the K-Ford Ratings. He is a college football insider and analyst. Okay, you project right now that BYU has a 42% chance of winning 10 games, which is wild in and of itself. But I also believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that you are saying BYU has the best chance of any team in the Big 12 right now of making the Big 12 championship game. 
If that is the case, why is that? What is happening to make you and the metrics push BYU into that Big 12 title game? It truly is remarkable, and that is the case as things stand right now with the updates that we saw last week, both on the field and in the model. It now has BYU as number one in the projected Big 12 standings, as you can see there uh, on the screen. Or that, That's the overall standings. The projected Big 12 standings, BYU and Iowa State, both with 6.2 projected conference wins. That's just ahead of Kansas State at 5.9, and Colorado, how about that, at 5.6. The reason that BYU is number one in the projected conference standings for me right now, which you can find on the website, BYU is already 2-0 and in conference play you've already banked those two wins they obviously can't go away Colorado and Texas Tech are the only other teams that can say that right now also your schedule difficulty is number nine out of 16 so it's middle of the road but you've already played one of your biggest tests in Kansas State and we've talked about the upcoming games that might be might be challenging but I think it's a combination of BYU being much better than we thought you're already 2-0, and and the schedule difficulty is not overly difficult. It's right there in the middle of the road, which for a team at the top of the conference, you'll take. I think one of the biggest surprises out of the Big 12 is Oklahoma State, right? I think many people had them picked as one of the top contenders for the Big 12 championship. Tell me this. Does your models take into account how good Jeff Van Gundy is in October? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jeff Van Gundy, I mean, he, he is a underrated college football coach, I think. And maybe not in Big 12 circles, but nationally, he is an underrated college football coach. What he has been able to build in Stillwater for the last, you know, 15, 20 years, Oklahoma State's a top 15 program in that time. I don't think many people realize that, at least from a power rating standpoint. So the model does not explicitly account for, for Jeff Gundy or any coaching staff and what they're doing um, from that standpoint. However, it does know that this historically is a good program that is still built into the model with some of the preseason data that's in there. But yeah, there is no doubt that Oklahoma State has underachieved so far to this point. It's still a top 30 power rated team for me. You know, we talked about in the preseason how tough their schedule was right out of the gate in the Big 12 with Utah and Kansas State. You dropped them both. You were hoping not to. The Kansas State game got a little ugly. Uh, you're still looking at eight and four as the mm -hmm. most likely record. You've got a 14% chance to reach at least six Big 12 wins, which I think that's going to be your cutoff at a minimum. If you don't reach six wins and you're not going to have a chance to make it to Arlington, even if you do get six, you might lose out on some tiebreakers. So the path is still there for Oklahoma State, but it's very narrow, especially because now they've lost the head-to-head -head against two of the preseason favorites in the conference, Utah and Kansas State. And they got to take on right now the number one team in the standings in BYU on October 18th, which we look forward to, but not before, obviously, the Cougars get a significant test with the Arizona Wildcats. Kelly, it's been great to talk to you. I do need to make one clarifying point. We all love a good Gundy, but Mike Gundy is Mike, the Oklahoma State Mike. head coach. Jeff Van Gundy is the former NBA coach. Yeah, same Gundys. <laughs> they have to be family. I just had Jeff, to throw that. I love Jeff Van Gundy, too. Jeff, Jeff Van was Gundy, saying, Mike Gundy, same, so, same. Somebody said Jeff, and it got in my head. I was like, I, it doesn't sound right, but I'm rolling. We got Jeff. We got Stan. NFL. We're talking Mike Gundy. My yes. comments remain. Guys, <laughs> he is an underrated college football coach. Clearly, even in my book, since I don't know his first name. But hey, no, I, you're right. And he's got an amazing mullet to boot when he opts to go <laughs> that route. Hey, Kelly, in all seriousness, amazing stuff that you've put together. We enjoy looking at the metrics and watching BYU shock the nation and overachieve. Uh, we'll do this again soon, brother. Be well. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Have a good one. You Great got it. You. Kelly.